Recently, I was contracted to provide audio and lighting for an event, and the band would be bringing their own stage package of mics and an IEM monitor rig. So I thought we would take a look at this for some real-world examples of how this all works. I've got a Midas M32 at front of house and a DL32 at the stage connected via AES-50 for my stage inputs. The band, several days before the gig, provided me with an overview of their needs along with an input list and stage plot. So I knew what to expect them to bring and where I needed to have power drops for them on stage so I would be ready when they got there. Knowing that they only needed 12 total channels, I ran a sub snake to the upstage left corner of the stage. I bundled the fans on my snakes in bundles of four to keep them less tangled and easier to identify when connecting them. I also write the sub snake numbers on the channels with a sharpie just so they're easier to read. I also know I'll need at least one RF mic for the MC for the event. So I have a rack of RF mics with a four channel fan to fan snake marked and pre-connected to the receivers that I can quickly connect to my DL32. The band has their own mixer for their monitors in their rack and it's a digital Soundcraft mixer. And that's along with their IEMs and an analog splitter. All of their own mics and lines will connect to their analog splitter in the rack. A splitter essentially sends the lines to two places. One set of lines goes to their Soundcraft console. The other set of lines, also known as tails, goes to the house snake. Okay, so they have their own whirlwind sub snake running upstage to keep their stage runs neat to their splitter. They've loomed their drum lines which gives them quick connections to their drum mics. All of their lines will be going to the splitter. And like I said, their splitter will have a tail that will feed the house snake and then ultimately the house console. Looking at the tail going to the house, the band is actually labeled the connectors with the sources, not the numbers. That is a very good way to do this. I can just look at what the source is and connect it to my snake in whatever order I want. I don't need to try and cross-reference or decipher numbers. In other words, I can run a standard console patch to front of house regardless of how the band is patched on stage and without very much thought. Plus, they can mark a channel do not use so that I don't waste a channel sending something like the click track to front of house that front of house doesn't even need. Since the band is using the same rig each night, the same mics, the same in-ears, the same mixer, their monitors can be roughly preset and consistent from gig to gig. The sound check can go pretty smoothly. Much of the patching is pretty much mistake proof and easy to troubleshoot if there is a mispatch. And the monitors pretty much only need fine tuned with most of the sound check simply being for me at front of house. Come across. I have other videos about setting up stages, both small and large, so check out one of these videos for more information on that. I'll upload the M32 scene file from this show to the Patreon page. As always, please like and subscribe to support the channel. There are affiliate links in the text below, and I will see you next time.